So, this is not something I was really expecting to do, but the amount of amazing comments I received on my first upload of this video has really pushed me to come back and to take into account a lot more of the deaths I failed to do so originally. This means factoring in a much larger percentage of death from not only the civilian population, but also importantly trying to factor in the death from wounds and diseases caused by war. Something that I originally completely omitted, given that I was unable to really find any sources, at least in English, that would help me get to a better understanding of such a number for Japan at this time. This resulted in my initial rough estimate just consisting of battle deaths on the field that we knew of, and not prolonged deaths as a result of conflict. Now, the original number I came to in the end of my first upload for this video was an estimate of around 335,000. A number which many of you rightfully pointed out seemed a bit low, given that I was trying to account for nearly 150 years of history. You guys were absolutely right to criticize that number. It is low, and a large reason as to why it was so low was because I was only counting for numbers we do have documentation of, and then using those numbers to speculate on the rest. This is also once again why I originally failed to account for more of the civilian death and death caused by disease and famine. We just don't have a lot of accurate data regarding those numbers, something which I will try to account for better this time around. Now, this video will be a re-edit of the original one, so some parts will be exactly the same as in my first attempt, yet other parts will be largely different. But the last thing I want to bring up before we dive back in is just some of the other comments I was seeing on the original video, comparing the Sengoku Jidai to other major wars that occurred largely in Europe, plenty of which were even from wildly different time periods, while others, like the Thirty Years War, was a bit more comparable. Now obviously, there are a lot of great comparisons to make when looking at Japan and Europe throughout history. But, it is extremely important to remember that comparing militaries is something that is often risky to do. We need to keep in mind that for a large portion of the Sengoku period, many samurai families only had an army that consisted of several hundred to several thousand troops. We don't start seeing larger coalition samurai armies until much later in the period. Because of this, I want to remind people that we often cannot and should not compare fully formed European kingdoms or empires to that of individual samurai clans. Yet, with that said, there is still a lot of great things we do know from European war which we can realistically take into account for finding our new total here. A lot of which I completely steered clear of the first time around, as I was hesitant on how much of European warfare I should have factored in, if at all. But with that said, let's jump back in and first start off by once again adding up the numbers of casualties from major battles that we do know. Obviously, it would be completely impossible to know the exact number of deaths for the period. The time frame is just too big, and we don't have nearly enough documentation or accurate numbers to properly come anywhere near the correct answer. But given the information we do have, we can formulate an idea of just how many may have died specifically between 1477 and 1615. Now, I know some people like to say that the Sengoku Jidai really began back in 1467 at the start of the Onin War. However, I personally do not like to use that start date because I view the majority of the conflicts during that time as a wider extension of the Onin War itself. This is why I consider the official start date of the Sengoku period to be right when we consider the Onin War to have ended. So then, with that said, let's jump in and start off by trying to figure out how many battle deaths we can estimate through the entirety of the period. Once again, I want to remind you that these numbers are in no way exact, and I welcome anyone in the comments to come forth with their own theorizing as to how many deaths there may have been. Also, I need to mention that I'll be primarily focusing on the battles that occurred in Japan and not during the later invasion of Korea, the Imjin War, but I will try to account for those later as well. But, right away, one of the first issues we come to is the documentation of casualties. The more famous period of the Sengoku Jidai essentially starts around the rise of Nobunaga and his victory at Okehizama in 1560. From that point on, we have a much more thorough depiction and understanding of the battles that would occur moving forward. From the fourth battle of Kawanakajima in 1561, to the battle of Nagashino, up through Sekigahara and later the sieges of Osaka. It is from 1560 to 1615 that we see the real height of the Sengoku period. This is the phase of the era that has become the most storied throughout the years, but it makes things a bit difficult because a lot of the earlier battles are not as well recorded. We have a lot of detail into when they happened, who they were between, and in many cases how many soldiers were present. 
However, losses are not always listed. And speaking of listed, you may be wondering what sources am I using to calculate these numbers? Well, being that there is no mass database of Sengoku Jidai battle deaths, I'm unfortunately forced to rely upon the numbers given on sites like Wikipedia. However, I have done my best to not only review what sources the Wikipedia articles suggest, but also cross-reference the numbers with whatever other finds I could dig up, as well as numbers I could find in some of the various books I own. This is a challenging process, and like I said, finding any true accurate number of all the deaths would be impossible. All we can do is come to a rough estimate. So, the first thing I want to do is try to calculate the numbers we do know. Numbers that I could find, or in some cases guess at, due to what would have been reasonable given surrounding situations. Through this, I have compiled a list starting in 1555, with the Battle of Miyajima. From there, it includes most of the major battles of the period moving forward. The Battle of Okehezama, the Battles of Kawanakajima, the Battle of Anegawa, the Massacre at Mount Hie, the Battle of Mikatagahara, the Battle of Nagashino, the Battle of Terorigawa, the Battle of Yamazaki, the Battle of Shizugatake, the Battle of Komaki Nagakute, the First Siege of Ueda, the Second Siege of Ueda, the Battle at the Kuisegawa, the Battle of Sekigahara, and both the Winter and Summer Sieges of Osaka. Combining all the numbers I was able to find or form an educated guess at regarding these conflicts, all together come out to equal around 175,000 dead, if we round up. Now, as far as I'm aware, these values that I was able to find already do account for losses that were incurred from wounds, so for this value I am not going to account for any extra wound deaths, but I will for later values that we will get into. However, there is still a lot that can be said in terms of disease. But this is where things are going to get a bit tricky, because once again, I just don't have a lot of data to go off of, specifically for Japan. So this is where I'm going to use some ratios from other conflicts, ones like the Thirty Years' War, where disease is accounted for what is estimated to be around maybe two-thirds of the actual military deaths. So that would mean that we would be adding an additional 350,000 deaths to our total, bumping it up to 525,000 overall, which is already higher than my previous estimate, where I was not accounting for diseases. After calculating these values, the largest amount of death in any single battle is without a doubt the Battle of Sekigahara. Now, as I mentioned in my actual Sekigahara video, there are a couple of different estimates as to how many people actually died on the field that day, with most sources saying somewhere around 30,000, yet others going so far as to say as much as 60,000. For this calculation, I chose to use the more realistic 30,000 estimate. Because of this, we roughly come to the idea that over the course of the six hours the battle was fought, an average of perhaps 5,000 men were being killed on the field per hour. And of course, if we were to use the more devastating 60,000 dead number, that would mean that the death toll would double to around 10,000 per hour. But if we are just relying on the more widely accepted 30,000 dead, although it would be the single bloodiest battle in all of samurai history, in terms of actual percentage of damage inflicted by two armies onto one another, the fourth battle of Kawanakajima appears to be much more of a meat grinder, as both the Takeda and Uesugi would lose roughly 20% of their armies to each other that day on the field. Yet in terms of armies being completely annihilated, both the battles of Nagashino and Mikatagahara win out. However, if we were to add up all the dead from both sieges of Osaka into one overall number, that would be the most dead of any samurai conflict ever, coming out to what I estimate to be somewhere around 58,000 dead over the course of both the winter and summer sieges. So, going back to the original number I stated, we need to remember that this number only accounts for the battles, sieges, and conflicts that I listed. As you are probably well aware, I left out a ton. There were countless other campaigns, skirmishes, and wars throughout the entirety of the period that are much harder to find actual numbers for. So this is where we are really going to start pulling numbers out of thin air to try to come up with a reasonable idea of how many may have died. I need to warn you that this is where we'll be getting into a bit of math and my reasoning behind how I'm going to go about doing all these calculations. If you think you'll find that boring and you don't want to watch all that, please just use the timestamps below to skip ahead to my final calculations later on in the video. Now, it is no secret that as time went on during the Sengoku Jidai, the size of armies grew bigger as Lord's domains got more and more massive. This means that over time, the death toll from battles would obviously rise too. 
So for this, what I'm going to do is take the blueprint of casualties from other battles and apply them to segments of time, multiplying them by amounts I will go over in just a minute. Now the way I'm going to go about separating the eras of the Sengoku Jidai will be threefold. The early years, so the time going from 1477 to 1520. The middle years, 1521 to 1568. And the later years, 1569 to 1615. Each of these eras are around the same number of years in length. So then, let's start with the early years. How many soldiers may have roughly died during the first few decades of the Sengoku Jidai? Well, the blueprint number I'm going to use for the average amount of casualties from these early battles would be around 500 in smaller battles to 2,000 in larger battles. This is just an estimate I came up with after looking at the army sizes of an early battle like that of Arita Nakaide, Morimoto Nari's first battle and victory which occurred in 1517. However, since this range is just a rough guess, I'll be using a nice middle value of 1,250 casualties. As for the actual calculations, although numerous battles and skirmishes would have taken place over the four decades this early period consists of, I am choosing to use this number around three times per decade. Why three? Well, I would say that the first two would be good to account for any major battles that would have occurred, with a third put in to account for all other minor clashes added up. If you feel I should be using different numbers, please let me know your thoughts down in the comments. So if we break it down, each decade is as follows. Multiplying 1,250 times 3 for each decade, we get 3,750 dead in the decades ranging from 1477 to 1487. 1487 to 1497, 1497 to 1507, and 1507 to 1517, with an additional 1250 added in for the three year period between 1517 and 1520. This adds up to 16,250 dead during the early years of the Sengoku Jidai. Once again, this is just an estimate. However, it is here I'm going to try my best to factor in probable deaths from wounds and diseases. For calculating wounds, I looked around to try to find a reasonable estimate as to how many wounds resulted in deaths in other medieval battles. What I was able to find was that it appears that roughly for every two soldiers wounded, you would also have one death. Now, this is just a rough idea, as a multitude of other factors would be needed to be taken into account. But for our estimate, this is the method I'll be using to help us get some values. So it is here we are going to essentially just double the number to account for wounds that would end up resulting in a fatality. This brings our new number up to 32,500. But now let us also factor in disease death, using the same method I used before. Accounting for diseases and applying it to our initial value would bump this number up to 65,000. Which in my head seems like it might be too big a number given the size of clans at this time, but let's still go ahead and use it for our estimate. Now, onto the middle years. It is here I'm going to use the fourth battle of Kawanakajima as my blueprint for army values. We get a middle casualty value of around 3,650. But being that the fourth battle of Kawanakajima was probably one of the largest battles that occurred during this time frame, I'm going to subtract 1,000 from this number just to be on the safe side. So then, we are looking at perhaps an average of 2,650 dead per battle during this time. However, since we do start to know more details regarding the death tolls from battles during this period, I am not going to multiply the number by 3, but instead just by 2 per decade. Just like I did before, multiplying this number by 2 for each decade, we come out to around 23,850 dead, once again adding an extra 2,650 on for the additional years at the end. But now let us factor in wounds and diseases using our previous methods, and this number jumps up to 95,400. Moving on to the last period, this is really where we have the most number of recorded values for the battles throughout the Sengoku Jidai. But still, it has been hard to find data for such conflicts as the decade-long siege of Ishiyama Honganji, the Oda campaign against the Mori, the invasions of Shikoku and Kyushu, and so on and so forth. For this period, I'm going to be using the blueprint of the Battle of Komaki Nakakute, as it is a nice value in between the amounts of those at Yamazaki and Shizugatake. For this reason, I'm going to be using an estimate of 3,000 dead per battle. Once again, I am just going to be multiplying this number by 2 per decade, 
but I'm not going to do so at all for the years spanning from 1590 to 1615, as we already know the values from those years, going from the Imjin War to the Battle of Sekigahara and then to the sieges of Osaka. With that said, we get a rough value of 12,000. Which, once again, accounting for wounds and diseases, shoots this up to around 48,000. Alright, so, adding up all these values we just calculated, going from the early years to the middle years to the later years, we get a total estimate of somewhere around 208,400. Now, let's put that number on top of our previous number of 525,000. The new total we come to is 733,400. And that is not even factoring in the total amount of civilians that may have died as a result of war. Now, as I mentioned in my previous upload of this video, I was fully aware that my estimation for civilian deaths was likely way off. Once again, this is just another thing we don't have enough information on. What I tried to previously do was take the number of dead from Oda Nobunaga's attack on Mount Hiei and multiply that to come to an estimate. Once again, I was really only calculating for civilians that were killed directly by samurai, as was the case for Mount Hiei. However, this time around, after looking at civilian casualties from conflicts like the Imjin War, I decided not to risk underselling it again, and simply say that there is a good chance that it was over 1 million civilians killed, not only as a direct result of war, but also as a result of famine and disease that war brings with it. This would bump our grand total up to 1,733,400. But, now let us factor in the Imjin War, a conflict fought by the samurai during the actual years of the Sengoku Jidai. It is here I am just going to be accounting for the amount of Japanese that died during the war, and not any of the Koreans or Chinese. It is estimated that somewhere around 100,000 Japanese soldiers died during the samurai invasion of Korea. Now, this number I actually believe to be somewhat accurate given the sizes of troop numbers we know. It's likely that the actual number is a bit over 100,000, but not so much that I want to add thousands more on to inflate it up. So for now, I'm going to choose to just keep it at 100,000. That on top of our previous value comes out to reach up to 1,833,400. But I'm going to separate it between military dead and military with civilian dead, being that civilian losses is such a hard number to pinpoint. These numbers are massively different when compared to the number I reached in my first upload of this video, where I was not accounting for deaths from wounds and diseases, as well as only calculating for what I was considering civilians killed directly by samurai and not as a result of samurai warfare. Now, it has been estimated that throughout the 1500s, Japan had a population of anywhere from 8 million to 17 million. If we were to take a middle number of 12,500,000, the amount of deaths during the entirety of the Sengoku Jidai, using our rough estimation, would total to just around 14% of the population killed as a result of the wars. Which although seems like a smaller percentage, is still a staggering number, one which we should really reflect on more today. And it does bring up an interesting point, one which I know people like author and historical researcher Anthony Cummins has questioned. That should the samurai be compared to other mass murdering tyrants throughout history, based on the magnitude of death they would cause? Especially those we dub today as Japan's three great unifiers, who in pursuit of their goals led to the deaths of tens of thousands alone. And that's not even counting the millions of Koreans who were killed by the samurai during the Imjin War. Of course, there is a lot more to it than to simply call them bloodthirsty. Each of them had their aims during the Sengoku period, but it is impossible to ignore the amount of death that was caused as a result of samurai ambition. Once again, for the hundredth time, these numbers I came to were just rough estimates. If you feel I have left anything unaccounted for or made errors in my calculations, I would love to hear it in the comments down below. Please correct me if you think I have made any mistakes, or if you do know any other source that has given a solid estimation of the amount of those that died during the Sengoku Jidai. And with that said, thank you for watching, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell if you enjoyed this video and found it to be most interesting.